Hey everyone, it's Charlie. It's June 23rd, Tuesday. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the unbelievable speed at which we are being um, just led into a uh, uh, corporate fascist state um, and, and what's being done to blind you from it. Um, you know, the, the, all the amount of legislation that is going on right now that is going to dramatically affect you for the rest of your life is staggering. I mean, there is absolutely, it's almost inconceivable and it's almost impossible to keep up with. I mean, every day we hear some new piece of legislation, sweeping huge uh, proposal come out that is uh, unbelievable. I mean, you don't even have time to digest um, one uh, proposal before you're inundated with another one or, or inundated with some kind of world event to, uh, to take your, your focus um, off of the last uh, proposal. And for example, is right now we're, we're really being hit hard with the, this medical reform that's, that's supposedly going to happen and save us all. Um, and as a matter of fact, tomorrow night, uh, the president's going to have an hour infomercial, I think on ABC, where it's, you know, they're going to talk about uh, how important it is. Well, it, it, and along with that, you know, there's, there's legislation, one good piece to uh, audit the Fed. Uh, next week we're going to be starting talking about uh, immigration in the country and just daily almost we're, we're getting new uh, talking points to go over. The, the most important thing in my opinion that's going on is um, the distraction away from the uh, financial industry um, overhaul package that was announced and, and talked about briefly last week but now is being there's so much other stuff being heaped on top of it that it's going to get lost in the shuffle. Um, and when this gets passed, and when the Federal Reserve ends up with this dictatorial power uh, over the economy, um, all these other bills, all this other legislation is going to be absolutely meaningless. Because if the shadow government, Federal Reserve, decides that it wants to overhaul the medical industry, it just needs to declare it a systemic risk to the economy, which it is. And the argument can be made for just about any sector of the economy. You know, if you're in education, that's systemic, so they're going to take over education. If you're in, if you're in uh, law enforcement, systemic to the economy, take it over. You know, it, you're already seeing it with, with automotive, with banking, with insurance. You're going to see it with medical. Um, and once the power is given to the Federal Reserve, the game is truly over. I mean, there's just the, nothing else will really matter. And that has to happen quick. Um, and that's why you're seeing this massive push for changes going on uh, in our government. Because they need to get this thing done, and they need to get it done before the next midterm elections. Because by then, it'll be too late. It won't matter. They will have full control over uh, everything that, that matters as far as your day-to-day -day life. Um, you'll have a giant population in this country, uh, a majority of population in this country, that works for the government in one way or another and is not going to vote themselves out of a job. So um, that's why I think you're seeing this rush to get uh, all this stuff passed. And I think you're going to see a whitewash uh, of information now that, that's coming out with this Federal Reserve uh, power grab. So um, along with that, I, I'm, I'm looking at uh, uh, information that the World Bank put out uh, finally admitting that this uh, Federal Reserve Wall Street led three month rally it, that was uh, just a, a ghost rally is coming to an end rapidly and there's a few indicators that that are going to uh, drive the point home. Number one, even the World Bank, who predicted a, uh, a modest 1% decline in the uh, world GDP uh, in 2009, has now raised that to almost 3%. It's still a bogus number. It's going to be a lot larger than that. But they're, they're gearing us, uh, the world community, for further contraction. Um, along with that, you've got... Um, 
Fortune 500 CEOs and executives selling off their own stock at a two at, at such a high rate, you have to go back two years to see uh, the last time that they sold off their own stock at this kind of rate. And what happened at the at the very end of that 2007 sell-off? The credit crisis truly started. That's when the credit freeze started, and then by September of 08, it, we had a, the market crash. So. I'm going to post uh, two different stories with this video that will explain that a little bit better. Basically, the CEOs and executives of these companies, they know that this three-month incredible run-up in the stock market was bogus and it's not going to last. And it's, in fact, over. So they're selling off their own stock as fast as they can because they know that the next down leg is here and uh, they don't want to be caught holding the bag. You know, And in essence... Um, you can think of it as you have just been ripped off if you got involved in the market with the hype over the last three months. And these guys ran their stock up and now they're taking it out. So that's what's coming next. The other story I'm going to put with uh, with this video is um, an, uh, an article written by Ron Paul um, about this latest war supplemental that was just uh, passed. And it's absolutely staggering. I mean, we're sitting here in this country, we don't have a dime. We have every penny that our tax receipts are down 40, 50, 60 percent in some cases. We're having to borrow every dime that we spend. And here we are in this war, supp war supplemental to keep two wars going that are absolutely, somebody tell me the point, besides oil. Somebody tell me the point besides making bankers rich that we are in Iraq and that we are in Afghanistan. Now, and, and, and if people hear this and I sound like a bleeding heart liberal, think again. I served in Iraq in the first Gulf War. I've got a brother who served in Iraq and Afghanistan uh, and, North, and in South Korea. Uh, he's still in. He made a career out of it. I am not a liberal. I'm not a, I, I'm not a uh, dove or whatever. I, but I do have a brain in my head and I want to know why. Why are we there twice as long as World War II? I don't understand it. And nobody can explain it to me other than, you know, we're trying to get terror-loving terrorists. Really? Really? Nineteen people are holding this country hostage. Nineteen people that hijacked planes are now able to hold this country hostage for a decade? Thousands of American lives gone. Um, not, not to mention the the wealth that it's cost this country. And it probably will be looked at at some point in history as the, the uh, final pen that popped the American dream was the uh, unbelievable amount of money that we've uh, poured into uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. And you know what? This was supposed to be the new administration that got rid of them. There's no end in sight for this. Anyway, um, in this war supplemental, we had $660 million go to Gaza, $555 million go to Israel, $310 million go to Egypt, $300 million to Jordan, $420 million to Mexico, and $889 million went to the UN for peacekeeping pro program, or pro programs. Excuse me. Um, which, you know, and I know I'm just talking in the hundreds of millions, so it's really not important numbers, but um, it's absolutely asinine when you consider the fact that every dollar that I just told you there is either we're borrowing it and you and I get to pay for it later or it's coming out of our pockets right now. Unreal. Oh yeah, and let's not forget eight billion dollars that uh, is being set aside for potential pan flu pandemics, uh, forced inoculations, that sort of thing. So eight billion dollars getting set aside for that. And a hundred and eight billion dollars has just been given uh, in credit to the IMF so we can pay for uh, emerging markets financial meltdowns. It's unreal. At any rate, that's all I got for today.